Uh, Father thank God, uh, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity to, to connect. Uh, there are all sorts of things about uh, this season and way of doing things that are frustrating, but uh, one of the joys is we can say good morning to Carolyn in the middle of the night for her or something close to that. Um, and hear a little bit about uh, what it is that, that she has uh, you know, gone to do. And as we hear about that, we hear the, the sadness and the difficulty and a little bit of some of uh, what loving and serving and looking after Vera looks like. Um, we love and thank you for the fact that our community is one where we are brothers and sisters, uh, not just colleagues, where we have the opportunity to uh, continue in relationship, uh, continue in love and care. And so we bring uh, Carolyn and Vera before you in prayer this morning. Uh, we thank you for Carolyn for her love and her service of her mum. Please strengthen her. Uh, please give her continued uh, perseverance in kindness, uh, in gentleness. Uh, and we ask that you would continue to work in and through her as she shines as a, a light of the gospel, as someone who is willing to lovingly sacrifice uh, for the good of those around her. And we pray also for Vera. We pray uh, for her health. Um, we pray knowing that uh, as, as I pray now, I know so little of that situation and of what's going on there. But you, Father, uh, you know everything of that situation down to the most intimate detail. And so we pray and ask that you would look after uh, in a right and good way. Uh, pray that you would use your wisdom uh, to see uh, good things done uh, and to be uh, caring uh, for Vera, for Carolyn and for the Kilbys uh, as she has uh, left family uh, in order to lovingly care for her mum. And we pray all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jason. Very welcome. Um, John, chapter 21, last, very last chunk. If you want to join me, we're in, uh, as I said, chapter 21, and we're going to start from verse 15 uh, and read to the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that the disciple, this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Now, that last line has always struck me as a, well, for mine, a confusing way to end this story. 
in some ways it makes a lot of sense. There's there's all sorts of other things Jesus did, but it seems like such over the top hyperbole. The, wor- the world would not have room for the books that would be written. I don't know if you've ever been to a library and, you know, seen a big library, the overwhelmingness. We look behind John right now. We've got a great collection of books there. Surely if we were to fill the world with books, we would easily cover the life of Jesus. Easily, right? One big library has got to get the job done. Why end with such an absurd over the top claim i suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books written and as i reflected on this this is a passage that i think for the first time i perhaps understood in a way uh, that i hadn't before just last night as i was preparing uh this devotion and thinking about this passage all the way through the book of john john has been trying to point us to the identity of jesus And by the identity of Jesus, I mean this God humanness that we, no matter how long we've been Christians, struggle to wrap our head around. This idea that from eternity, the word of God has has always existed and that the word of God took on flesh. And that in Jesus, we have God and man, we have humanity and divinity intertwined as one. And that means that in Jesus we have the ultimate of being, the ultimate of infinite love, infinite goodness, infinite kindness. Jesus knows everything, has done everything, and I wonder if this pointing to the the things that Jesus has done overwhelming our capacity for books I wonder if it's pointing to this reality that John has kept trying to bring to us, this reality that the Christ is beyond, beyond knowing. And yet, John 17, 3, in knowing him is where we find life. He's unattainably awesome, unattainably, we we can't write him down. And yet we have these four gospel stories that that write him down for us. But as the spirit works in us, we know that knowing Christ is this continual growing experience for all of us. Perhaps you look at me and go, oh, 35, mate, you've got a whole bunch of learning and growing and things to develop and understand. And you're right. I surely do. But we all, we all have so much more of Christ to grow in, to understand, to shape who we are as we get a greater sense of who Jesus is. And I think that's a bit of where Peter stands in this passage. Do you love me more than these? Jesus asks. Yeah, you know that I love you, Jesus. Well, feed my lambs. Again, he asks him three times, mirroring those three times that he denied him. But Peter, there in verse 17 at the end, Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him this third time. The chutzpah, right? The the opinion that after he's denied Jesus three times, he gets hurt when Jesus triple checks with him, that he loves him, that he follows him. Simon, son of John, do you love me? I hope that when Christ asks that of us, that we aren't hurt in our frustration. Oh, Jesus, you should know that I love you. And we look at our lives and realize, oh, there's good reason for that question. Uh, a question we might ask of ourselves, do I, do I really love him? And Peter has this answer. I hope the same answer that we would give. This answer that, yes, Jesus is beyond me. Jesus is unattainably good but but yes lord you know all things you know all things you know that i love you and in answering with peter follow him Jesus knows what Peter's life will look like and what his death will look like. Jesus knows what John's life will look like. Jesus has got every second 
every detail of your life planned from here to eternity. And Jesus asks, do you love him? And when we say, yes, Lord, yes, you're beyond us, but yes, we really love you. He says this same refrain that we have heard many times, follow me. My prayer for us as we finish the book of John, as we finish this story, is that we'd have and know Christ as beyond us, as glorious, as the knower of all things, as life, as love, and that we would keep on seeing him as someone to follow, to grow into, that we would grow up more and more into the head that is Christ, repenting of sin, turning away from our failures and turning again over and over and over and over and over and over again, not just three times, not just seven, but 77, that we would turn after the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to pray that for us today. Father God, please turn our hearts more and more after Christ. Thank you for the day of our rebirth. Thank you for the day that we were saved, brought into your family, redeemed by your son. You know all things, Father, and you know that we love you. But you know also that we fail, that we sin and that we turn away from you. Please, Father, grow us in repentance, turning away from sin and turning after the Lord Jesus, the one to whom, if all the things that he had done were written about him, it would fill the entire world. Thank you for the wonder and glory of knowing him. And please strengthen us to live lives following, serving and rejoicing in his presence. And we pray these things in his name. Amen.